Hi, my name is Caitlin Murphy, and I will be talking about Knowledge Integration 2, which is our audio amplifier circuit. This circuit um, is found inside of cell phones, and we'll, I will be talking about it in terms of classes 311, which is signals and systems, 331, which is fundamentals of microelectronics, and 341, which is electromagnetics. So here we have our audio amplifier circuit. Inside of the dotted box here, we're going to talk about this in terms of 311 and 331. And then over here on the right, we're going to talk about the actual speaker in terms of 341. And um, so, from a 311 perspective, we have V in of T going to a linear time invariant system, and then we get a V out of T. And our V in of T here is A times cosine of omega T. Using Euler's function, we are able to break up cosine of omega t into um, the exponential of j omega t plus the exp exponential of negative j omega t over 2. And we know that a times cosine, if we increase a, is going to increase the ampli amplitude of our cosine function. Here, our v out is going to be a times the magnitude of h of o j, j omega times cosine of omega t plus the phase of h of j omega. And h of j omega is our transfer function here. And we can break it up using the same Euler's method as before. Now, this is assuming that we have a linear time invariant system, which, if you look at it, we actually don't. We have a nonlinear system. So now from a nonlinear perspective, um, if we actually look at the real output of our system, we're going to see that the sinusoidal wave has a different DC value and for V out and increased values for other frequencies. And this is because there are harmonics that exist due to nonlinearity. So to talk about nonlinear harmonics, for instance, let's say we have just cosine of omega t. Let's just ignore the a for now. That goes into our system, and we get y of t equals a constant times x of t plus another constant times x squared of t. We know that x squared of t makes this um, output nonlinear. But if we really look at x squared of t, it's going to be a half plus a half times cosine of 2 omega t in our system. So since we have a half, over here, we're going to know that we have zero frequency change for DC for the second harmonic, which is x squared. And we're going to have a 2 omega uh, frequency um, phase change for the next harmonic. So looking at these different harmonics here, you start noticing that um, as you increase the value of A, um, over time, these really small values along a line start to actually become significant. And a lot of companies, um, such as Intel, will go to the tenth harmonic just for accuracy. So now from a 311 perspective, we're going to look, or this is continuing the 311 perspective, excuse me, we're going to look at the square wave, which is very important for um, electrical engineering. So you can see that our V of T is a square wave and we get a transfer function h of j omega t in the system to get a v out. So looking at this, you can say that our v of t is a summation over negative infinity to infinity of a of k, which is our Fourier um, coefficient, times e to the j k omega t. And it goes into our system when we get v out, it is from k equals negative n to n um, times a of k h of j omega times k times the exponential of jk omega t. And this is useful for clock speed and um, for having better accuracy um, in testing of electronics. So, um, and you can see here in green at the bottom, the little squiggle, that's how we approximate it with signals, this actual curve, and this is called the sync function here. And so it's very important. Now from a 331 perspective, we are going to remove the second stage and look at this equivalent circuit up here. And you can see that um, our V out over V in, which is our gain, is negative GM1 times R0 in parallel with R1. 
And then if we try to make an equivalent of the entire schematic, we're just going to change our, to use our R out from the previous circuit, make a new little resistor, and then go to V out with our load of RL. You can see that um, V out now is A times V in of RL over RL plus R out, which is a voltage divider. And then you continue to add components and see um, the gain again in this third circuit is negative A times GM2 RO2 over 1 plus GM2 times RO2 and then in this final open loop gain has been reduced and you can see that R out is much smaller than RL. In order to actually increase this gain in the circuit overall since the gain is much smaller at the end of the circuit than it was in the beginning um, meaning like V out's gain is much less than the first stage of the circuit, uh, you would have to just increase the gain in the first stage of the circuit quite a bit. So now from a 341 perspective, we're going to look at the speaker. So here you can see that we have a um, example of um, B versus H and you can see the nonlinear function here, b of h, versus the linear function here. So if we're actually going to evaluate in terms of uh, nonlinearity, which is what our speaker is, and our speaker, it, speaker is just basically two magnets, so you have like a south magnet, and then in the middle you have a north magnet, and then you have a coil wrapped around that, and that coil, depending on the AC input, will move up and down, causing um, the speaker to work and uh, it so you can look here at the physics of that and so if we say B of H is nonlinear and we say mu which is the slope of this line here depends on H then we will get our nonlinearity function so here's an example of a magnetic circuit much like the one in the speaker and you can see that you can use um, B times S, which S is a segment of this circuit, like a cutout of it, um, you can see that that transfers the current and that H times L transfers the voltage and N times I, where N is the amount of wraps and I is the current um, for this coil, is equivalent to the EMF, which is electromotive force. And we can use these two equations then, summation of H times L equals summation of N times I, and summation of BS equals zero. So you can see here in this smaller circuit with an air gap um, that our equivalent circuit will be over here, which is the, um, we call it reluctance, or you, there's different names for it, but this R in this circuit over here in parallel with an R naught, where R naught is the reluctance of this gap, and R is the reluctance of the uh, rest of the circuit. Um, and we can see that I equals E over R plus R naught. And then if we were to look at this, we take our equation from the two summations above, and we have HL plus H naught L naught equals NI as our load line for this function here, which is B b versus h and you can see it has a linear curve and then just another straight curve here to approximate the nonlinear um, characteristics of this circuit. It's not actually linear but we're going to approximate it as linear and we check this loan line and we use this equation to see if our h makes sense if it's greater than 100 amps or 1000 amps per meter depending on whatever your amps per meter is and if it's not, you're going to use this other load line using mu of A, which is um, B of M over H of M or H of K. And then you can create a new I versus V function using those same analogies that we used above. So thank you very much. That was my presentation for KI2. I hope you enjoyed it.